You don't believe that. I don't know if you believe that. You know how many church kids I've had in my clinics for years? Go to FCA, go to youth group every Wednesday night, sing all the worship songs, we love Jesus, show up in my clinic and look at me and go, yeah, but we loved each other. So, God did not create sex for love, not the boundary. He created sex for one context and one only, permanent, lifetime commitment, marriage, not love. Now, sometimes in marriage there's love that's helpful. <laughs> On occasion, there's not. Not the criteria. 25 years ago, I walked an aisle and said these words to you, young man whom I love, you and you only. Guess what we got, sicker, poor, and worse, right? <laughs> when we're single before we're married, we think it's going to be happily ever after. And I know why you teenagers think that, because you look at your parents' marriage, and that is the most romantic relationship you have ever known. <laughs> you know yours is going to look like that. My marriage didn't look like that. Look at my husband and said, my goodness, it's got a view because I'm the most exciting thing that ever lived. <laughs> there are problems in my marriage. It's his fault. If I dumped him, got a better one, I'd have a good marriage. My marriage has problems because I'm in it. I didn't say I'll stay married to you if. I said I'm committed to you for the rest of my life. And marriage is the best boundary. It works because it's easy. It's not complicated. Everyone in here can understand this boundary, right? Either you're married or you're not. Are you married? <laughs> You didn't even have to think of that for more than two seconds. You knew immediately, didn't you? Are you married? Yes, he didn't even look at his hand. Very good. Anybody <laughs> planning to get married next week? September 25th or so? I, yeah, usually I have a ninth grade boy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's Jackson. Jackson. If you're not married, you're not married, you pretend that next Saturday.